as students in the previous video that is um, Mandelism part 1 we discuss about how the Mandel got a curiosity to know what is the uh, reason for the transmission of the character from parents to offspring. So he has selected the Pisum Sadaivum for his an experimental model because he is a, able to identify so seven different traits seven different traits seven genes are available the chromosome number of this Pisum Sadaivum is in 14 one four in deployed conditions okay so he found all the advantages in Pisum Sadaivum so thereby he carried out many experiments okay with the help of the the Python setup. So we got that all the progeny and has done a lot of experiments within a um, short periods because it is having that Python setup lifespan is very short. So it will help. It is the added advantages for Mendel to carry out a is lot of a research. Okay, so let's uh, discuss. So here yeah, when he conducted the experiments hybridizations we have conducted hybridization method because he is the person who has given the hybridization procedure already you know how this hybridization is done so so in case of pisum sativum it is most favorable for the cell pollination it's a bisexual flask so favorable for the cell pollination cross pollination will not take place in this plant so this will add a advantages for uh, mentals to carry out his experiments because all these things are will be pure breed the bison satellites and their progenies will be pure breeds okay if it is continuous many generations also um, so when he connected that mono hybrid crossing what is mono hybrid cross mono hybrid crossing and uh, he selected the, the two different plants with a uh, one pair of contrasting trait Example, if uh, uh, tallness, the height of the plant, or pea plant on the taller, or pea plant on the darker. So he has taken two different parents, two different pure breed, and with a one pair of contrasting state, he crossed, he crossed these two plants, two different plants, and at the end of the F one generations, he is able to get only one of the traits only one of the traits what he crossed so he has taken if he has taken tall plant and dwarf plant so this tall is a pure breed and dwarf is also pure breed when it is crossed the f1 generation he was able to find out all the plants are tall all the plants are tall so none of the plants in f1 generations resemble the recessive trait so thereby he got that idea okay certain this traits will have the similar homozygous alleles or it may have the heterozygous alleles in the f1 generation so in uh, he identified in f1 is a hybrid because he has gone for the cross pollination so one of the traits expressed phenotypically so that way the tallness is expressed over the darkness the darkness allele uh, not able to express and it became the recessive and this capital letter T that is a dominant allele which is able to express is become the dominant and it became the dominant allele so in F1 generation all the plants are tall all plants are tall okay here you get the confusion to further go on because this F1 we call it an hybrid and he is able to identify the tallness but he was not very sure whether this the genotype of the F1 will be having the homozygous conditions or heterozygous he has concluded is a heterozygous still when you go for the F2 generation you we find very difficult to identify the genotypes so in order to clear his doubt whether in order to clear that he is going on the right track he has selected the homozygous pure plant so he wanted to do certain experiments that is test cross so in the test cross he has taken the f1 generations he has taken the f1 progeny and crossed with the recessive traits of the plants he has taken the f1 progeny and crossed with the recessive traits of the plant that is the test cross always the test cross in test cross f1 progeny 
he crossed with the recessive traits of the plant. Okay, then F1. So, F1, I have written here capital letter T and another one is in question mark. The, because it, since it is expressing the tallness, tallness, maybe it may have the pure homozygous or it may have heterozygous. Based on my observation, based on my observation, I can say okay, it is an heterozygous because we have taken two different. But how come when we go for the F2 genders, how come we are able to identify this is completely a homozygous genotype? It is completely a heterozygous genotypes. So though it express that phenotype characters. Okay, so thereby I have written here question marks. So I want to keep it here. The pure, the allele is in capital letter pure, the similar. When I keep that one, when I cross with the recessive traits, I am able to get all the things, all the offsprings are tall. All the offsprings, okay, all the offsprings are tall, so it is an homozygous, it is an homozygous, okay. When the F1, that is TT, is crossed with the recessive traits, the F1 crossed with the recessive traits and if it is an homozygous if that f1 i if f1 genotype is an homozygous and i may get it and all the plants are tall okay so i want to check it where it is in i change i have kept it one dominant allele and another one decisive allele so this one dominant allele and another one decisive alleles so when this things is crossed with the recessive traits I am able to get 1 is to 1 ratio, 1 is to 1 ratio. I am able to get equal proportions of the tall plants as well as the dark plants. Okay? I am able to get equal proportions of the tall plant as well as dark plants if it is heterozygous. If it is a heterozygous. Do you understand what I am saying? So in this class, if there is F1, genotype is an pure homozygous and it is crossed with the recessive trait then uh, the offspring of that will be only tall will be only tall if that f1 genotypes is an heterozygous crossed with the recessive trait then it will give a equal proportions of tallness and darkness so this is one of the way to find out whether the genotype of the expressed phenotype is homozygous or heterozygous. Okay, so he has connected another crossing also back cross. So in back cross, he has taken F1 hybrid. He has taken F1 hybrid. So F1 hybrid now we know that is okay. This F1 hybrid is crossed with a, any one of the parent, any one of the parent, maybe tall parent or maybe dark parents. Okay, suppose if F1 hybrid, so this is an F1 hybrid, suppose if it is crossed with the pure homozygous tall plants, what will happen here? We know very well what will happen. Okay. So, all no? so look at that square so suppose f1 hybrid is an heterozygous if f1 hybrid is heterozygous it is crossed with any one of the parents to see the close relationship between the offspring and the parents previous generation so if f1 hybrid that is in crossed with the pure homozygous either tall plants are tall plants it means we will get it all the things all plants are tall 
Am I right? Okay, the same thing we have done. So all the plants will be tall enough. So that will give the clear concept of that whether he is using the pure homozygous plants or is an heterozygous plant. Okay, got it? Clear? So all the test cross can be a back cross, but the back cross cannot be a test cross. Okay. So in test cross, F1 is crossed with the recessive traits. F1 progeny is crossed with the recessive traits. In, in case of back cross, F1 hybrid, the F1 progeny is crossed with any one of its parent. This is tall or dwarf. So any one of the parents. That is the difference between the test cross and back cross. All the test cross can be back cross, but the back cross cannot be a test cross. Got it? Clear? That's good. So we have seen the mono hybrid. And in order to find out the genotype of the unknown plant, unknown tall plants. In order to identify the genotype of the unknown tall plants, we have done the test cross. Okay, we have done the test cross. So in the test cross, it shows all the plants are tall enough. Okay, so thereby he is able to easily find out, the Mendel is able to easily identify whether the, um, the taken plants are homozygous or heterozygous plants. So let's move on. So at the end of the experiments, mono hybrid experiments, so what are the predictions and postulations? So, so end of the mono hybrid cross. No? And cross. What are the things we are able to observe? So number one is an F1 generations. Am I right? The F1 generations, the phenotypes. All are tall. All plants are tall. F1 generation phenotype. All plants are tall enough. Okay. So F1 phenotype ratio. Ratio. What will be F1 phenotype ratio? So that is 3 is to 1. So three plants are tall, one is a dash. Clear this is the phenotype. The number of phenotypes. Number of sorry, this is an F2. So in F2, that F2 phenotype ratio is 3 is to 1. The number of F2 phenotype. is 2 okay tall and dwarf okay so it is end of the mono hybrid cross mono hybrid cross we are able to observe the f1 generations the phenotypes are shown all the f1 generations so the dominant characters okay so since we have taken the example the tall and dwarf and the f1 generation of the mono hybrids of uh, tall and Thus, we are able to get F1 generation. All the plants are tall. Okay, the phenotypes are tallness. So, when this F1 generation is self pollinated, okay, self fertilization, cross fertilization, self fertilization. When this F1 generation is allowed for the self pollination, then the phenotype ratio of the F F2 will be three is to one. Okay, so F1, F1 hybrid is allowed for the cell pollinations. Okay, so the F2 progeny is formed. This F2 progeny phenotype ratio will be 3 is to 1. The F2 in the F2 phenotype, tallness and dwarf is appearing. Though this darkness disappear in the F1 generation, it is started to reappear in F2 generation. This clearly indicates there is no blending of inheritance. Okay. There is that blending of inheritance is disproved by this. 
when this f1 progeny is self pollinated it is able to produce tall plant and dwarf plants it is not producing any intermediate height of the plant so thereby no blending inheritance so blending inheritance is disproved either this will be a tall or it will be dwarf that two things can happen there will be no intermediate height can occur in this so thereby the blending inheritance is disproved okay so f2 phenotype ratio is 3 is to 1 3 is to 1 3 is a tallness and 1 is a dark plant 3 dark tall plant and 1 dark plant but the number of f2 phenotype is 2 because tall and dark both two things only appear clear do you understand so let's see the genotype of F1 generation. F1 generation. Genotype. It will be T and T. Heterozygous condition. Okay. So F2 genotype ratio. What will be F2 genotype ratio? That is. 1 is to 2 is to 1. What is this? This is a pure homozygous and here 2 heterozygous tall plants, 1 homozygous dark plants. So, this is so F2 genotype ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Okay, the number. Number of F2 genotypes, F2 genotypes will be 3, okay, the number of F2 genotypes is 3, do you understand, clear, so what is the postulations given by the Gregor Jogan Mendel after conducting mono hybrid cross experiment, mono hybrid cross experiments, what was his prediction, number 1, so, in F1 generation, he is able to see only one of the trait which is crossed. Okay. So, the express trait is called a dominant trait. Dominant trait is in N F1 generations. Number two. Okay. Since one of the trait is expressed in F1 generation. So, the expressed trait, the expressed character is called the dominant character and this is explaining about law of dominance. Law of dominance. When two different plants with a, uh, one pair of contrasting trait or when two different plants with the two pair of contrasting states is cross and all these things in F1 generation they produce only one of the trait or only one of the trait is appeared in the F1 generation. So the, this is explaining the law of dominance. According to the law of dominance, when two pure plants, when two pure plants is crossed with a pair of contrasting trait, one of the trait appears in the F1 generation, another trait is not expressed in the F1 generation. So, the appearance of the trait is known as a dominant trait, which is not appeared, which is masked by the dominant trait, is known as recessive trait. However, these recessive traits disappear in the F1 generation, they are able to reappear in F2 generations. So, in F2 generation, there are things that uh, uh, recessive traits are able to appear in the minor proportions. Okay? Am I right? So, third things. Law of segregation. Law of segregations. Okay, what is law of segregation? 
So we have seen when the tallness and darkness, they are having the gametes. I mean, they are having the factors. The factors, two factors are responsible for a trait. So we have seen that you have, uh, you have seen the tall and dark. Okay. So since they are homozygous, pure line, and only one of the alleles enter into the gametes. One of the allele enter into the gametes. So thereby we have written so T. Pt and here Pt. So one of the gametes enter into the fusion during the gamete formation. So this one of the allele enter into the fusion. So thereby it forms a Tt. You understand what I'm saying? So they randomly reunite. So at the time of gamete formation, the factors for a traits separate out and randomly reunites to form the trait. So that's the called the law of segregation. So law of segregation. This is an exact, keep it in your mind. This is a tallness. Okay. Factor responsible for the tallness. This is factor responsible for the darkness. Okay. Since these are all homozygous, uh, only one factor will enter for the fusion process, the gamete at the time of gamete formation. So one one allele, one allele entered for the fusion process at the time of gamete formation. So from dark also one allele enters, okay, they forms the trait and the trait is a heterozygous. Do you understand what I am saying? So the factors separate out at the time of gamete formation and they randomly reunite to form a trait, to form trait. This is we call it a law of segregation. This is law of segregation or law of purity. Law of purity. Okay. So he is able to postulate certain things. Number one is in, in F1 generation, only one of the trait will be expressed. Okay. So the expressed trait is always called the dominant trait. But when, uh, uh, when it, the F1 generation is self pollinated and the F2 progeny will be having the recessive trait as well as a dominant trait. Okay, so based on that, he has given law of inheritance that is a law of dominance. So, another law is a law of segregation. So, at the time of gamete formation, the factors for a trait separate out and randomly reunite to form the trait. That's we call it a law of segregation. Okay, here one no blending inheritance take place. Okay, so completely they are working out. So when he has done the tallness, so Mendel has done the tallness, roughness, monohybrid experiment. So he is able to find out 787 tall plants in the F2 generation, 277 dark plants in the F2 generation. So the ratio will be 2.87 is, is to 1. Okay, so that is you are having the 2.87 is to 1 that is the ratio so f2 generations of the tallness tall plants and dark plants so f2 generation of the tall plants is 787 and the dark plants is 277 okay so i hope so you understand what is monohybrid and what is the phenotype what is the genotype what is the monohybrid f2 phenotype ratio what is the monohybrid F2 genotypic ratio? All these things. What is test cross? What is the back cross? Why the test cross is connected? All these things. I hope so you understood clearly. So, I'm going to put in any Am I right? So, thank you for watching my channel. And we see you in another session.